place. He's a good God, isn't he? Isn't he? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's bless the Lord. If you know that he's your refuge and strength and a very present help in trouble, amen. Amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, Covenant Christian Church. Good morning, Facebook Live. Good morning, YouTube. We are thankful for each and every one of you being here today. We're excited about the presence of the Lord that is in this place. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. He is a mighty God. Wonderful. He's great and greatly to be praised, isn't he? Amen, amen, amen. Um, this morning, I know you have your Bible, so I want you to turn with me to Psalms 46 and 1. You probably won't be shocked when you see it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen? Amen. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. And for allowing us to be assembled together in this place. Lord, we love you, we honor you, and we give you praise for who you are and for what you've done and what you're doing and what it is you're going to do. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your hand that's upon each and every one of our lives. We thank you for how you protected us throughout this week. You've kept us from hurt and harm and danger. Lord, you continue to provide for us and take care of us. Lord, you ha have given us a mind even this morning to be uh, assembled here. You gave us traveling grace to get here. Father, we love you. We honor and thank you. And we pray the Lord that you would um, bless those who uh, are going through sickness in their bodies today. We ask you to touch them. Father, in the name of Jesus, your word says that with your stripes we're healed. And we ask you to touch them now, to cause help and strength and wholeness to come into them from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. Father, whatever the situation is, God, we pray that you would move by your spirit in the midst of them. Lord, we pray that you would go even now to hospital rooms and touch them. Lord, those folks who are dealing with, with, with uh, this coronavirus, God, we ask that you would touch them. Oh, God, it's not too much for you. It's not too hard for you, Lord Jesus, and we ask you to touch them. Whatever the situations are, God, if it be cancer, Lord, if it be high blood pressure, Lord, what, whatever it is, God, we ask that you would touch them. Turn it around, God, in the name of Jesus. Those who are lost and outside of arc of safety, God, they're sin sick. Oh, God, we pray that you heal them too. Oh, God, heal their heart. Draw them to you, God. Help them to see the need, Lord, to cry out to you, to know you for themselves. God, we thank you. We pray for those, Lord, who are just going through depression, God, who, 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 who the weight of the world seems too heavy for them, God. I pray that you would touch them and lift their spirits even now. And Father, I thank you for each and every one under the sound of my voice. I ask you to touch, encourage, and strengthen them, Lord. Move by your spirit in this place. Do what it is you want to do. And I ask you to touch them. Touch their eyes that they would see you, not me. Touch their ears that they'd hear you, not me. Father, move me. You come forth in this place. I desire not your glory, but only that you'd be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. This morning, I want to talk to you from the thought, a present help in our trouble. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, 
The Lord is a present help in our trouble. Yes, yes, yes. For those of you who have been with us for the last couple of weeks, you know we've been talking about trouble. A couple of weeks ago, uh, we talked about good trouble. And how the early church found themselves in trouble for the sake of Christ. And after being beaten, the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 5, verse 41, they departed from the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. In other words, they weren't griping or complaining over, over their trouble. They rejoiced over them. And come on now, folk today can't even rejoice over people talking about them. Must let somebody lay their hands on them. Let somebody say something about you don't like. Too often nowadays, our first inclination is to give them a piece of our mind. Some of us don't have a whole lot to give. I can't get no help this morning. Y'all ain't going to help me. Come on, some of us need to be holding all we got. Mess around and give up some and be absolutely gone. You mean borderline now. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's amazing how people are, yet they have the audacity to quote Romans 8.28. <laughs> people of God today, you, you, you need to understand that if you are indeed one of them, that Paul describes in 828, then all your trouble is good trouble. <laughs> yeah, every one of them, every bit of them, it's all good trouble. We also talked about Job, who God referred to in Job 1 and 8 as a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and eschewed evil. Yet he too found himself in trouble. And if that wasn't enough, it was trouble that God sent. <laughs> and that's where many of us as Christians have an issue. Because us grasping the idea that first of all we would have trouble. And secondly, that God would send it uh, goes against what, what, what a lot of people have been, been taught. Folk have been misled to believe somehow that if they give their life to Jesus, that all the trouble's going to be over. Even when the scripture clearly says something different. Job chapter 14 verse 1 says, man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. Also, 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 12 says, yea, all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Neither of those scriptures exempted us from trouble. In fact, the scripture in, in Timothy in fact, it pretty much invites it. All that will live godly in Christ Jesus. So you had to make a choice to live godly. If you make that choice, what you're doing is saying, I can't get no help this morning. I'm just saying to you that it's important for us to understand that even though we walk with Christ, we're going to be confronted with trouble. I'm convinced that 
if we have the status of being one of them, Brother Terry, it's all good trouble. And last week, we talked about being in his will and in trouble. We found that even Jesus was an exempt from trouble. And we know he was in the Father's will. For he said in John uh, 5 and 30, he said, I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. Yet the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter, uh, chapter 4, verse 1, then was Jesus led up of the Spirit, capital S. Yes. Then was Jesus led of the Spirit, capital S, mm -hmm. into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Yes. In other words, the Lord or God sent him, his Father sent him yes. to the wilderness to be tempted or to encounter trouble. <laughs> and you know what makes it so bad? This is just after the father had affirmed him and bragged on him. Similar to what he did with Job. For the Bible says in, in Matthew chapter 3 verses 16 and 17, it says, and Jesus when he was baptized, went straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. And right after that, this same Father who says, I'm pleased with him, Sent him into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And yet we think that somehow we ain't going to ever get sent there. going to go through some things. And then, then, then we talked about the disciples who, who found themselves in trouble while doing exactly what Jesus told them to do. In Matthew chapter 14 verses 22 through 24 you, you, you'll find that Jesus, this is after Jesus had fed the multitude and the Bible says that he constrained the disciples to get in the ship and go to the other side. And while they were doing exactly, they were doing exactly yes. what Jesus told them to do. Yes. On the way, mm -hmm. they encountered a storm. Yes. They found themselves in trouble. However, what we, we learned in that was that if we look for Jesus in the midst of our trouble, rather than assuming there ain't nothing but the devil, we may very well receive a blessing that we cannot even imagine. Because Peter stepped out of the boat. Rather than just assuming that it was the devil out there. He stepped out of the boat and went looking for him in the midst of the trouble. And I'm convinced, ladies and gentlemen, if we start looking for Jesus in the midst of our trouble, there's something out there. It's a blessing for us. Something beyond we could, something beyond anything we can imagine. As I said last week, I have not heard of anyone without some kind of flotation device ever walking on water except Peter. 
Somebody said that a joker tried. But he had some planks under the water. Called himself going to walk. But somebody happened to move one of the planks. Ain't going to call who it was, but some of y'all know. Sort of like that little dog who was barking at the big dog. And, the, and somebody didn't mess around and left the gate open. You know, they, you know what, they, what they said, the little dog said, who? Yeah, I'm sure that, that man, who, who pulled that plank out of it? <laughs> I'm just saying. You can be doing exactly what God wanted you to do, or you can be in his will and still find yourself in trouble, which brings us to our thought for today, the present help in our trouble. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to know that when you find yourself in trouble, you are not alone. <laughs> the Lord according to Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 will never leave you nor forsake you he'll always be there even on those times when you can't sense him or you can't find him the Bible says in Job chapter 23 verse verses 8 through 10 it says behold I go forward but he is not there backward but I cannot perceive him on the left hand where he doth work but I cannot behold him he hideth himself on the right hand that I cannot see him but he knoweth the way that I take when he hath tried me I shall come forth as gold understand that even when you can't seem to find him he knows exactly where you are. And as in the case with Job, ladies and gentlemen, I'm convinced that our almighty God has drawn a line in the sands of our life that our trouble cannot pass. The Bible says in, 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 in Psalms um, 30 and 5, it says, weeping man. Endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that, that word joy ha has two meanings. It means possibility and permission. I, I want you to understand that, that, that your trouble only has permission to come so far. So you might be having money trouble, but joy cometh. You may be facing sickness in your body, but joy cometh. Your family situation might be jacked up, but joy cometh. How can I be sure? Because he's a present help. In trouble. Doesn't matter what's going on. It didn't come to stay. It came to pass. Got to know that God is with you. He's going to take care of you. I'm sure that we have all heard or, or read the story about the footsteps in the sand. I think many of us have in those times when we were going through the most difficult places may have felt as if we were going through alone. However, as was revealed in the story, it is in those times where we're not alone, but he is, he is carrying us. He is carrying us through those difficult times. Now, you, 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 you thought you were just going by yourself, but God was carrying you. Yes. 
helping you to get through. Giving you the strength to go a little further. I'm just saying that you never walk alone with Jesus. The text says God is our refuge. The definition for refuge is a condition of being safe or sheltered from pursuit, danger, or trouble. The problem is sometimes we fail to utilize the shelter. <laughs> Have you ever seen the, the, the Geico commercial that looks like a, a, a scene from a scary movie? So you got these, you got these young people and, and, and they're frantic and they're running. And one of them says, let's hide in the attic. And one of them says, no, let's hide in the basement. And then the one girl says, why can't we just get in the, in the running car? And they look at her and say, are you crazy? Let's hide behind the chainsaws. And then the camera pans to the would-be villain, and he's looking at them like, really? How, how, how dumb can you be? But the reality is, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes we hide behind the chainsaws. Because when we're in trouble, we have a, we, sometimes we have a tendency to drift away from God rather than run to him. Sometimes when we're in trouble, we, 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 we'll, we'll talk to the wrong folk and take bad advice. Sometimes when, when we get in trouble, we do things that hinder us from the hell. And it's just like hiding behind the chainsaws. God is there and he, he wants to help us, but we have to use the help. If we commit ourselves to prayer, to Bible reading, and to singing spiritual songs in the midst of our trouble, we can activate the shelter. See, because the shelter doesn't keep it from raining. The shelter don't stop the storm. It just protects us from it. And it's amazing, it's amazing what happens when, when, when we activate the shelter. The Bible says in Isaiah 26 and 3, Thou will keep me and per him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. It's amazing what happens when in the midst of our trouble we turn our attention toward God. Songwriter said, in the presence of Jehovah, God Almighty, Prince of Peace, troubles vanish, hearts are mended in the presence of the King. What happens? When we start to praise God, when we start to get into his word, you know you can't worry and praise at the same time. It's amazing how you can be feeling bad and start to give God glory. And somehow, what is going on seems to dissipate. Because it can't stand in the presence. I'm just saying we got to go to the shelter. I'm just saying. That he promised 
to be our present help in trouble, but we have to utilize it. I often tell these young people that I work with at CDCC, I give them this scenario. I said, if it's raining outside and you, are, you go out there and, and you get wet, you didn't know it was raining. But once you know it's raining, if you go outside without an umbrella, whose fault is that if you get wet? When trouble come, if you fail to utilize the shelter, don't get mad at God. Because his promises are true. And he said that he would be a very present help. But if we don't run to the shelter, don't get upset because you're wet. Text says, God is our refuge and strength. True strength cannot be measured by how big our biceps are, or how, many, how much weight we can bench press. Neither can it be determined by the money or the assets that we possess. It's spiritual. And the source of that strength comes from God. I think that after all that God has spoken to us over these few weeks, it's clear that we're all going to face trouble, whether it be spiritual, physical, or emotional, or, or even financial. However, our hope has to be in Jesus. <laughs> he will give us the strength that we need to handle whatever comes our way. The Bible says, in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I, I believe, though, sometimes we think that strength is only when we're able to overcome our troubles. However, I'm convinced that real strength is when you can acknowledge and recognize that you're weak and that you need God. <laughs> How you figure that, Pastor Ron? Well, let's read what Brother Paul says. Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 Verses 7 through 10 says, And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations that was given unto me, a thorn in the flesh, that was given unto me, a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Now, now no. Nope. Paul saw this as being given to him and not inflicted upon him. Is, is that what your Bible says? Mm -hmm. That was given to me. <laughs> what, 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 what? Gifts are what? <laughs> he, he didn't say it was, it was inflicted upon me. It was given. Paul recognized it was good trouble. <laughs> let me read on. Let me read on. Let me read on. For this thing, I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities. <laughs> That the power of Christ might rest upon me, therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, 
in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, for when I am weak, then I am strong. When we come to the place to understand, God, I need you. I can't do it without you. I'm weak. <laughs> rather than us trying to do it on our own, rather than us, no, God, if you don't help me, I can't do nothing. At that moment, that's when you're the strongest. Paul's acceptance of his frailty and need for Jesus ultimately was his source of strength to learn how to totally rely on God in the midst of his trouble, as should we. And I'm convinced that Paul came to understand that God was indeed a very present help. In his trouble. A very present help. In his trouble. Finally. The text says. That he is a. Very present help. In trouble. Have you ever had one of those friends. That can never be found. When you need them. They're always busy. When you need something. They, they, their hands are always tied. When you in trouble. <laughs> but yet they're quick to say. If you ever need me. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Let, 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 me, let, me, let, me tell, let me tell it on myself. Let me tell it on myself. Several years ago, uh, me and Brother Lewis went to pick some muscadines. I don't know about you, I love muscadines. Have mercy. So we went to pick these muscadines. We were out there, and he was on one side of the vine, I was on the other. And we just picking, going along. And all of a sudden, Brother Lewis yells. Now, to my defense, <laughs> to my defense, he didn't yell help. He, he didn't yell help. He just yelled. <laughs> Which is the code word for me, save yourself. <laughs> and before he could look up, I was at my truck. And if he'd have yelled again, I'd have been in it. <laughs> Now, I wasn't a present help. <laughs> I was present. I was no help. <laughs> Here's the thing. There's a lot of people who have the ability to help, but they refuse to be present. Mm -hmm. They got the know-how. They got the skill. They got the ability. But you can have all of that stuff 
and yet refuse to be present and you're no good to anybody. Several years ago, when we, were, we had done some work here in the church, somebody came to me after it was done, talking to me about how it could have been done and should have been done. And I said, hold on. I'm not going to let you do that. Because had you been here, you could have showed us. You could have helped us do it better. But since you wasn't here, since you wasn't present, you don't get to just talk about what was done and how it was done. Oh, no, the devil is a lie. I, 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 I just want to say to us, people of God, That we're supposed to be striving to be like Jesus. So the gifts and the abilities that we have, yes, he gave them to us. But he didn't give them to us just to have. See, y'all might want to get quiet now, but I'm, I'm going to talk about this a little bit. Because we need some folk who will be present here. Who'll say, here's my hands, here's my abilities, I don't just have them, God didn't just give them to me to have, he didn't just give them to me to do, them, do something outside of the house of God. Y'all hear him? It's getting quiet now. We need some present help. Because the reality is, is we're supposed to be like Jesus. And he is a very present help. He don't say, yeah, I, I can heal. I can deliver. I can set free. No, 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 no. He, that, that ain't how he works. Somebody need healing, he shows up. Somebody need burden lifted? He comes to carry. But ladies and gentlemen, you got to know that sometimes he wants to show up through you. Sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, the very present help is you. I'm going to let that marinate. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. Because if we're not careful, we'll be sitting around waiting on Jesus to appear. To do stuff. When God said, yeah, I want to do it. I was with me a while ago. <laughs> when I start talking to the wall, amen, wall. Amen, like. I'm, I'm just saying. He's a very present help in trouble. And the wonderful thing about him is when we call, he answers. The Bible says in Jeremiah 23, 33 and 3, call upon me, and I will answer. Show you great and mighty things, which thou knowest not. And Jesus said in Matthew 28, 20, Lo, I am with you always, 
even to the end of the world. Amen. I'm closing. But I simply want you to know that regardless of what we face, the Lord is a very present help in our trouble. In spite of what we're going through, in spite of anything that we may be facing, he is a very present help in our trouble. And I encourage each and every one of us to allow him to use us to be that help. Amen? Amen. 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 Facebook, YouTube, we thank God for you today. And our prayer is that something said has been a blessing to your life, has strengthened you, has encouraged you. If this ministry is a blessing to you, we invite you to help to support uh, our endeavors. There's a button on the page that will take you to our website uh, and PayPal's where you can give, and we want to just thank you in advance for hearing God and, and obeying him and allowing him to use you to be a present help <laughs> to this ministry. Our heart's desire is that we would touch lives and that souls would be one to the kingdom. And we want to say thank you. Thank you for hearing God and obeying him and being and doing what he would have for you to do. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for each and every one that's assembled here, whether through the Internet or God sitting here in the room. I thank you for your blessings, encouragement, and strength to each and every one of our lives. And God, thank you for reassuring us that you are indeed a very present help in our trouble. Father, we ask that you would continue to lead and guide and direct us in the path that you would have for us to take. Father, help us to hear your voice and to follow you and to do what it is you would have for us to do. We pray for guidance and wisdom and strength. And we pray again for health and wholeness in, into each and every one of our bodies and those who are facing sickness. God, we pray, Father, for salvation to those outside of the ark of safety. And Lord, all across this nation, I pray that you would begin to touch the hearts and men and women of men and women. Lord, that we would turn our hearts to you. God, that we would cry out to you, that we would be obedient to what you would have for us to do as a nation. God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for, again, uh, giving us strength and wisdom and guidance in every area of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.